Good evening. This is Pastor Phil of Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. It's Bible study, deeper life studies, getting deeper into the word. Boy, I hope you're ready for a good time in the Lord tonight because we got something planned for you. Now, if you're if you're on the phone, all, all you have to do is get a hold of our website at wccw.org or just look at Facebook. Glory be to God. But we're excited that you're here today. Glory be to God. If you've already asked for your outline, you may have one. If not, at the end of the broadcast, all you have to do is go to our webpage, wccw.org, and send us a message. You'll find the message page, easy to find, and say, I want outlines. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Let's get into the word tonight. Father, we thank you that what we're about to receive is for the nourishment of our mind, our will, our emotions, and our spirit, man. Fill us up today, Father, that we leave here change. I turn my notes and my thoughts over to you, that only thing that will come across is what you say. And once we receive from you, we will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're gonna continue. We, we talked last week on how to, how to speak words in tough, how to speak godly words in tough times, you know? The right words in, in tough times. If we go through tough times, you see, what you say is the evidence of what you believe. You speak your belief in God's word to problems and you can expect change. You speak your feelings, your emotions to your problems. Stuff ain't going to change. If anything, they're going to get worse. So, you know, uh, what, what I like to do, let's look at Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4.29. So it says here, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now that's a powerful scripture. I mean, words are so important for a believer. What you say is so important. You know, let's look at another translation of this, the new century. It says, when you talk, do not say harmful things, but say what people need. Words that will help others become stronger then what you say will do good to those who listen to you. You know, this is tough. You know, I grew up maybe maybe where maybe my father didn't say right. Maybe call me uh, call me what I was called, called me what my behavior was at the moment. You understand? Instead of and I remember my mom always called me into what she believed I was two different things. You know, it's easy when you find somebody did something wrong is to point out the wrong. But you need to say what people need. You understand? Words that will help others become stronger. You should be known like that. Glory be to God. You understand? And it, it's so powerful in that your words are very important and you must learn to control them. This is the most powerful thing. When you come into the kingdom and you're born and you come in born again, your spirit man is saved, but your mind, will, and emotions have to be transformed. You understand? They have to be changed. And so some of those old ways and how you dealt with stuff and what you say, you understand? You you know, God is going to work on you to correct because you, once you become born again, you're a king and a priest and what you decree comes to pass. You understand? Ephesians 4, I believe if you, if you, have, a, you have your Bible, if we look at Ephesians 4, 31, and I'm going to go there right now. And this, in this Bible study, if you have questions, I want you to write them down in the comments. Just, just type out questions you may have. We'll, we'll deal with them at the end of the broadcast. Ephesians 4, 31. Excuse me, but it's a new Bible, so my pages are sticking a bit. So don't, don't get upset with me, all right? Hallelujah. In Ephesians 4, 31, look what it says here. Uh, it, it states... Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Well, that's powerful. Whew. With all malice. Ephesians 5, 4 says, if you go there, Ephesians 5, 4 says what you understand. It says neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. He's, he's even talking about even if you tell a joke, you're jesting. If it's going to cause harm with people, put people down, you need not to do it. That's not convenient. 
And I know that means <laughs> that we have to change some of our ways, but that's why we're in Bible study here tonight to learn how to change our ways. See, what you say will get in your heart and eventually it'll control your life. So God's like, I need you to get the right words in your heart. You know, I know we go through some tough times. You understand? We, we go through some tough, tough times in our life. And sometimes as believers, we're led by our feelings. So our first response to the time of trouble is based on the pain and pressure we go through. So I, I just want to share this with you a moment. Because sometimes what you say the first moment is so important and so impacting. You understand? When you're, so let's look at Job. Let, let's look at Job. <laughs> Job lost his children, his worldly possessions, his health. You understand? And he could easily got mad with God. You understand? There's a scripture in Psalm 140. And I mean, Job's heart was broken. He lost his children. He lost his possessions. He lost his health. This all happened within a day. And so Job was committed to God. And if we look at uh, Job, let's look at Job 1, 22. Job 1, 22. Matter of fact, with Job, Job 1, 20 to 22. I'm getting it. I don't have my reader with me today. <laughs> I don't need it. Look at Job 1. And we'll look at verse 20. So here Job lost everything. And look what's the first thing that uh, he, he, that came out of him. Glory be to God. Come on, we take our time. We're going to learn this well. Glory be to God. And we're going to know how to speak godly words in tough times. Glory. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and on the ground and worshiped. He worshiped God. And he said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, naked shall I re return thither the Lord gave and the Lord have taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, in those days, they didn't understand a lot about the devil. The devil was openly re revealed in the New Testament. But in that day, he thought God had done, you know, it, but notice what he says. Another translation says, it don't matter whether it's God or whether it's not. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then in verse 22, it says, and I, I could, uh, I, we put that out, verse 22. Not, not once through all of this did Job sin. Not once did he blame God. Not once did he get angry. Not once did he speak curse words. Not once did he do that. Here's a man under extreme pressure. He under unbelievable pain. And he didn't make his statements based on feeling and emotions. He didn't make it on fear. See, he knew Psalms 147, three, he says that God, he heals the broken heart and then binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. You understand? He, he was so committed to God. Thank you, Jesus. You understand? He, he, you understand? He, he was so committed to God. You understand something happened where you will not something happens when you will not let situations separate you from the love of God. Because when you got that love, when you got that word in you, it doesn't matter what happens, you're going to be committed to him. I mean, many of us would have said a lot of things during this time. And death and life is in the power of the tongue. Glory be to God. And notice by the fact he didn't curse God, he didn't blame God, he praised him. That's what worship, he praised him. And I think Job 42, 12 and 13 says he got double for his trouble. He was reward, his, his reward was to get double what he lost. But see, instead of blaming God, he worshiped him. Even his wife came to him and said, well, you need to curse God and die. He just looked at, just he didn't even respond to it. Because he, he knew his God. And in his heart, there was a commitment that nothing was going to separate him from the love of God. How many of you, all somebody's got to do is say the wrong thing and boom, what comes out your mouth? I mean, you get to the point, if you're still cursing when something happens, you need to fill your heart. It isn't a thing of understanding. If still curse words are coming out, you know, foul language, <laughs> harmful, harmful language, corrupt communication, because pressure's on you, that should be a sign to you, I need to work on my heart. 
I, I need to get these words out of my heart. It doesn't matter if people understand. It doesn't matter if people say, I would do the same thing, but there's corrupt communication proceeding out of your mouth. And you need to work on that. But God is so merciful and full of grace. Hallelujah. You understand? See, Job learned that God was faithful. You know, he learned those things. And he learned it even through during that time to from Job 1 to Job 42, when historian says it was either eight months or 18 months. You understand? But in that time frame, he got closer with God. He didn't blame God for his situation. So we need to understand this. And today I want to talk a lot, a lot about that you can control your mouth by praise and thanksgiving. See, we're not supposed to express ourselves by fear. We got to insist that words of praise and words of thanksgiving come out of our mouth. Now, you just follow this teaching for a moment. You may have some questions at the end. Just follow the teaching. Turn to Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to look at 45 and verse 47. Deuteronomy 28. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to look at 45 and we're going to look at verses 47. And if you have the outline, that those scriptures probably are on there. But let's look at verse 45. It says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou, thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statute which he commanded thee. Now let's go to 47. Notice what, notice what the Lord says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of the heart for the abundance of all things. Now let's, let's look at another translation, get a better understanding. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and heart and gratitude for the abundance of all which he had blessed you. Now look, look carefully, God was angry with the group of Israelites for not serving him with gladness as he was with those who never served him. He, he said, you're supposed to serve me with gladness. After all I've done for you. And I know we're in the old covenant. He said, here he mentions curses which come upon them, which are just as severe as the curses which come upon them for not serving him at all. You know, people who don't serve him, those curses are gonna fall upon them. But here he's talking to those, these same curses will fall upon you. If you, you understand, if you don't serve me with, with joyfulness of heart. God demands that all of us serve him with joyfulness and gladness of heart. You understand, it, he, he demands that upon us. Apparently, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of choice to serve God with gladness as it is to serve him in the first place. So, we, so our emotions have to be subject to our will. And I'm, I'm talking here about it because it's hard to be joyful and glad when you're under pressure and things are going wrong. That's why we have faith. You know, it, it, you know uh, it, we, we choose to be saved. We have to choose to serve God cheerfully. I'll say that again. You choose to be saved. You made that choice. You have to make a choice to serve God cheerfully. And the test of cheerfulness is not when things are going good. The test of cheerfulness is, is, is when the times are, are barren, when the times are pressure. That's why we have to learn how to control our mouth with praise and thanksgiving. See, we have to invite joyfulness and gladness into our lives. But when you get into jealousy, blame, judgment, bitterness, and fear, they're not part of the spirit-filled life. The easiest thing to do is blame someone. It's the easiest thing to do is have an opinion of something or someone, but God's not looking for your opinion. And the hearers aren't looking for it also but joyfulness of heart and glad. Man, when you receive it in your heart, whew, he even said in 2 Corinthians, I don't even want you to give unless you want to give to me. I love cheerful givers. You know what he was saying? It's, it's just keep the, keep the money in your pocket. Because after all I've done for you and you giving grudgingly, 
Your grace you're given under need? I only want someone who wants to. That's why some of you stay, that's why some of you never have more than enough. That's why some of you are challenging finances because you, you just don't want the opportunity to give to God. I'd rather give him my last dollar than hold on to it because I know my God deserves it more than anything I'm going through. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why we have to get to the point to renew our mind. You understand? You can renew your mind. You can control your thoughts and you can control your words. That's what Romans 12, 2 says. We need to renew our mind. And that's so important that we do that. See, when you're surrounded by pressure or pain, you have to practice the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving so that thanksgiving will come to your mind and mouth first, not complaining or cursing. For example, if, if your child disappoints you, the first thing should come out of your mouth is praise and thanksgiving. Someone didn't buy you, forgot your birthday, that should come out. Pray. You need to practice the presence of God. I'm teaching here. You need to practice with the small things that you're surrounded with. I forgot my anniversary, the low life dog. No, that's not what we, we practice with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. I'm alive another day. Thank you, God, Father. We've been together these years. I just thank you. It's a practice of praise. Practice the presence of God. It's not about the scriptures. It's about practicing this. You have to invite joyfulness into you. You know, some people you don't even want to be around because they're going to find something negative, blame about everything. But you could tell someone who has, who has praise and thanksgiving and have joyfulness of heart. They're so joyful to be alive because of what God has done for them. Glory be to God. They don't have time to, to put you down. You have to practice when you're disappointed. Practice. Practice is present with praise and thanksgiving. Otherwise, it, that's why we, if we practice this, we won't walk in fear. We looked at, a we looked at last teaching about, uh, uh, about when, when um, Jairus was asked Jesus to go heal his daughter and the woman with the issue of blood came in and when she came in, all of a sudden the, the servant came and said, no use bothering Jesus no more because hey, your daughter's dead. And, and, G, and God heard him, Jesus heard him and turned to him. You understand? He said, you control this. Don't you speak that fear. What you said I'll do, I'll do. And Jariah shut his mouth. Glory be to God. His daughter got raised from the dead because he controlled the destiny. You control, many of you control the destiny by what's coming out your mouth. The destiny of your life isn't as challenging as it would be if you learn how to speak the right things. See, the force of fear coming out of your mouth, if you get that, it's, it's more, it, 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 let me tell you, the, it, it has a force, but praise is more powerful when it comes out your mouth. Praising God, thanking him. The first word you speak when you're under pressure needs to be praise and thanksgiving. My grandfather told me when my mother passed, my mother went home to be the Lord when I was a teenager. And um, I was, <laughs> when he heard about it, he, he was just praising God. I mean, praising, thanking him. Thanking him that for my mom's life at this time, just thanking. I couldn't understand it. I wasn't saved then. I just couldn't comprehend it. How come he up here just say praising God? Because in the back of my mind, I mean, I was like, why didn't God do something? I'm, I'm thinking like, a, I, I don't know God. You understand? But he praised him. And I'll never forget when we were going to the service. He said to me, you know, it's a tough thing that you have to bury your children. But I thank God I'll see her again. Man, I, he showed at that moment, I saw how pain he you know, the pain was. There was pain, but he never let the devil get into his words. He never did. Glory be to God. The first words you speak when you're under pressure needs to be praise and thanksgiving. Not the problem, not what they're putting you through, not the racial thing, not the, this thing, not her, what these things. It should be. We need to because our death and life is in the power of our tongue. And there's power in praise. When we praise, God enters into our presence. Jesus said, praise stops the enemy's voice. Look at Paul and Silas. We looked at the last teaching. 
You know, the other prisoners heard them praising. Matter of fact, that was Acts 16, verse 25. Acts 16, verse 25. Let's look at it. Let's look at the uh, Amplified Translation. When you have it, say amen. Hallelujah. And it says, but about midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Now, we already know they actually were doing what God has sent them to do, and they got him put in prison for them. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. You're just doing what you're supposed to do, and bad things happen. And they didn't just, they didn't just arrest them. They put them in prison, hung them up. You know, their feet was clamped. They were clamped there in the bottom of a place where rats and mice and everything's walking around, running around there. And they just, at midnight, they just start praying and singing. And the Bible, the Bible says in verse 26, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to the foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. See, I believe the Holy Spirit put, put this account in the book of Acts as a type of our midnight hour. Instead of whining and crying, you understand, we fight back the enemy. We fight with honor and praise to God. Sometimes we need to stop whining and crying. You understand? Take those tears and get at the enemy. See, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. He could have blamed the he, he could have blamed the guy that put him in prison, the people that arrest him. No, yeah, I think we all have midnights. Glory be to God. And Paul and Silas, out of the abundance of their hearts, they praise and sing to the notice they sing to the Lord. They sung praises to the Lord. They weren't singing, uh, don't uh, pass me by. Well, they were singing praises. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before me. Heaven and earth adore me. What a mighty God we pray, we serve. They were singing praises to him. They knew who their God was. And even though they were going through this, it didn't matter. We understand we're not going to speak the problem. We're not going to let our feelings. I think about midnight, their feelings was trying to get a hold of them. This is me talking here. You understand? They was trying to get them and they said, oh, no, we're not going to let them. And Paul said, come on, come on, Silas. I know that song. Let's sing. And they sung with a, with a loud voice. Glory be to God. You understand? You have to realize that you have inside of you everything you need. Everything you need. It's already inside of you. It, let's look at Ephesians 3.20. This is a powerful, you know, we know the King James Version. God is able to do all, you know, he's to do exceedingly and abundantly. See, I, I like the New Century Translation. It says, with God's power working in us, God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. See, the power of God comes from the inside you as you praise him. We did a teaching on being more inside minded, not outside Monday. We're, sometimes we'll focus on our feelings and emotion. There's something on the inside when you get born again. The Holy Spirit resides in you and when, when you get born again. And there's God's power. The Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us, resurrection power. And Paul and Silas praised God until his power rose up so strongly from the inside of them, it became an earthquake inside the prison in Philippi. That's right. They, they praise God until the power rolls up. Thank you, Lord. See, the more they praise, the bigger the power of God became until the power shook that place and their chains were loose. See, the earthquake didn't tear the building down, but it loosened the chains of all the prisoners. There was such a presence of God in that jail that no one could escape or even move. Woo, just the presence of God. I remember I was ministering in a church in Columbia, South Carolina, and it was me and another ministry ministerial friend of mine. And I'm telling you, this this there, there was a situation. I guess right at the uh, we were waiting on our ride, and the ride was late. And they, so we're we're tr we're we're trying not to talk about the lateness because we didn't want to talk about the people who were picking us up. So we start praising God. Oh, we just start praising Him giving joy to them, singing songs, because the thought was, you know, we're supposed to be there at eight o'clock and it's 10 to eight. 
you know, and so we just start praising and thinking and thanking God and worshiping God. And I mean, just so we got so loud in that in that area, which was the entrance of the hotel, that you know, the lady at the reservation desk started crying. And she said to them, I want what you have. And I'll never forget what happened. My my friend, my brother, he went, he went up to her and he started ministering to her. Not only did she get saved, she got filled, but it was like a presence of God in the room. I wanted to go near, it's like God's presence was there and all we could do was just stand still with tears in our eyes. She accepted Jesus and, and then we start praising him again and a ride came. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I mean, we could have blamed what's going on. Why are they taking so long? We've been waiting for 45 minutes. Why they haven't showed up? But you don't understand, we decide, we just gave thanks. And at that same time, it was like an earthquake. <laughs> you understand? The power of God broke the chains off that young lady. And that came from the from God who dwelled inside of us. So instead of blaming and, you know, we're talking about, I don't know where they've been. They know we got to be there on time. Da, 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 da. We just start praising and giving thanks. You understand? It, you know, when you become God inside minded, when you realize that the God you are praising is on the inside of you, then his power can come out of you and break every chain. You don't have to sing break every chain, you can break every chain. I'm talking here about establishing a new lifestyle. Let me go, practice the presence of God. Every week there's disappointments. Every week there's frustrations. But instead of speaking about them, start praising God, thanking him, I'm alive. Thanking him, it could have been far worse. Thanking him that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You understand? You, we have to get, you know, the old saints, my grandfather was one. Uh, he wasn't a Bible scholar, but man, that man could sing some songs. In the midst of the worst situation, that man be praising God and singing. When he didn't know what to do, he would praise and sing God. And then next thing you know, he knew what to do. You understand? I know it, it, it allows you because praise stops the enemy's voice. And it's not as much as you singing, but being more thankful. Let me ask you this, and you're listening to me today. How much, how many, how many times a day did you give thanks to God rather than asking him for your needs or asking him to do something? We need to have a grateful heart. Some of you, you're, I know, you know, I may not know you personally, and if I do, if you're part of our fellowship, you may have shared your testimony. You know, sometimes just one thing God did is more than enough. If he doesn't do anything more, we have enough to be thankful for. I'm just so thankful I found, I, I was able to accept Jesus. And there's some things he's done and we have to remember those things. We have to practice this because it's easy to say corrupt words. It's easy to blame people. It's easy to say how you feel. I'm talking about, you understand, when you're led by your feelings in the first time of trouble, you, you understand, you will, you will fail. Things will go right. It's, you know, the tongue is, it's like, if I, you can't take those words back. Glory be to God. And we don't want to, we don't want that. Uh, are you with me? Come on, say that with me. I don't want that. I want my words to be powerful. I want my words to be grace to the hearer. I don't want to speak how I feel. I want to speak the way God wants me to speak. So Holy Spirit, help me today. Glory be to God. That's what you gotta do, help me today. If we look at John 14, one, look at John 14, one. And I, I have a different translation, let's, let's look at this. See, I'm, we, we are gonna go through tough times. We are gonna have pressures. Things are gonna happen. You're gonna be doing the right thing and a bad thing will happen. As long as there's people, there's going to be issues. You only need two. Sometimes you only need yourself, excuse me, but you only need two. So look at John 14, 1. He says, and, and the scriptures in King James says, let not your heart be troubled. You know, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe and adhere to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and adhere, adhere to and trust in and rely also on him. You understand? 
you know, and here means putting your attention on him and trust. Trust means leaning on him and rely only on him. But this is a commandment. Do not let a commandment from Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Do not, this is a commandment. He's commanding us. You have that responsibility not to let your hearts be troubled. You have a responsibility not to let that stuff. That's what praise does. A moment that that negativity comes into your life, moment those pressures come. I remember one time my wife and I, we, we were going through, I mean, family going through some financial things, and all of a sudden we were talking about it. We just stopped talking and start praising because we weren't accomplishing anything talking about what we didn't have. But as we praised and gave thanks, God gave us wisdom. I mean, all of a sudden now I can, I can hear the Lord on what he's saying. Notice in verse 27, John 14, 27, and I'm, I'm going to the New Living Translation. He says, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. I mean, it's an inheritance. Not as the world give do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Mm, that's powerful. Woo. That's the Amplified. Oh, that's powerful. Matter of fact, we're going to look at, there's another part to the Amplified. Look what it says. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. It's a commandment. Stop allowing yourself. Stop letting yourself be agitated. Stop letting that little stuff disturb you. You know, many of us carry our feelings on the sleeve just because somebody look like they throw their nose up at us, though, though these things are happening. Stop. Do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. You know, don't permit it. Don't let fear come into your life. Pastor, it's not easy, but we need to practice this with the small things. With the th small things. I remember every time we, when, when I grew up, we had the telephones. And if somebody called around 12 or one o'clock, I heard my mother say, oh, somebody must have died. Oh, somebody like this. Oh, something bad's going to happen. I mean, used to hear her say that. And she'd pick up the phone. And do you know, I, I start saying the same thing. And late at night, somebody go, oh, Lord, something bad going to happen. You know, said so something going. That was fearful. That was fear. I had to cancel that. I had to stop that. I had to practice that because it was coming out of my mouth and death and life is coming out of my mouth and the power of the tongue. And we have to get to the point that our trust is in God. We're not going to let it, nothing separate us. We're going to stop allowing ourselves to be agitated. See, once people, you know, the devil knows how to push your buttons. You could be on a roll and all he wants to do is push a button, get you disturbed, get you frustrated. The moment he gets you frustrated, you're off track. You got to stop allowing it. The Holy Spirit is in you. You have enough power in you to be able to stop this. You understand? When you become God inside minded, it's enough in you. Jesus, Jesus said in first, I'm sorry, Paul said in first Corinthians 10, 13, I believe it's 10, 13. He says, they have no temptation or trial that's common to man. He said, but God is faithful with, with that temptation, trial or test. He will always show you a way to escape. And then this is where we get mixed. He was, he's not going to allow, he's not going to allow you to go through something that you don't have faith enough to do. He's not going to allow the enemy to test you with something you don't have faith enough to do. He made that promise to us. So if I'm being attacked, I can stop being agitated because let me tell you, God is with me. And see, your first words are so important. So many of us say the wrong things the first time and we forget. And those words are hanging out there, planting roots. I'm working on your first words, your first response. You know, <laughs> I'm working on myself for my first response when pressures come and disappointments come. You understand? I'm working on my first response. I've asked the Holy Spirit, help me. If the response is wrong, show me, because I want to quickly repent. I want to take those words back. I want to give words of praise and thanksgiving. You understand? I, I just want to, I'm not going to be talking about the, uh, how bad this situation is with this virus thing. When I just thank God that he takes care of me every day and he's my healer, he protects me. And if a thousand go down in my, on one side, a thousand go on the other, I ain't got to be concerned about it because God is with me. This is where he wants us to be. It draws attention. Hallelujah. See, Jesus 
has won every battle we will ever face. And what we're dealing with in our personal battles in our minds to enforce what we have to, we have to, we have to believe what Jesus has already won for us. He's already won. Whatever you're facing, he's already won the battle. And sometimes you, some of y'all need some teeth marks on your tongues. You need to bite your tongue and stop speaking the first thing that come out of your mouth or speaking how you feel. See, our battles against the pressure that Satan brings against us, he, he brings us against us to convince us that it won't work for us, that God's word won't work for us, even though Jesus has already won the battle for us. The devil knows he's already won the battle, but he wants to deceive you. He wants you to take it personal. He wants you to speak your feelings. You don't know, she ain't no good. They don't like me anyway. Well, they didn't like Jesus either. You're in the sounds of me, you're in a good club. It's like their word, you can't define yourself over what you think people think of you. You define who you are by, the, by what God says about you. And many of you don't say enough good things about yourself, here I go. You don't even believe what we say that you're the head and not the tail. Cause you keep talking like you're the tail. You're the top and not beneath, but you keep talking like you're beneath. That you're anointed and appointed, but you talk like that, that God's presence is not on you. You look in the mirror and you see, you see age, God sees beauty. He sees wisdom, he sees a plan. Just say what he says about you. That's how you practice the presence of God and thank him for it. I thank you, Lord, I'm gonna live 120 years because you made that promise. I thank you, Father that you love me. I mean, I mean, th these are things that we have to practice his presence, giving thanks. And some of you, we have difficulty giving thanks over our own lives, over what God's done. If I asked each of a, one of you to give a testimony about something spectacular, something that God, you know God only did, tears probably would come to your eyes, you would be rejoicing and you'll remember those things, but he's done so much for us. That's why he says, I appreciate those who come with us. There's worship, without being joyful and cheerful. I mean, worship. When God asked Abraham, he said, uh, after, I, uh, after his son Isaac is about 30 some years old, God, they said approximately that, yeah, he told me, he said, I want you to go up and uh, use your, your, and give a sacrifice. I want your son to be the sacrifice. He didn't even, he did not, it didn't even, let me tell you, didn't even cross his mind. He obeyed God. He turned to everyone. He said, the lad and I come back to worship the Lord. We're going up to worship God. He wasn't gonna let nothing separate him, including his child from the love of God. You notice I said, including his child from the love of God. How many of us have so many things that come in between that will separate us from his love? That we put preference over him. See, praise is, is one of our utmost importance. It's not, praise is not singing praise songs. Praise is you. See, let, 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 me back, let me back that out a moment. Yes, going to church and hearing praise and worship songs is so profound. It's such a blessing. But man, the songs you sing for him, the praise you give him is what he looks for. He looks for you. When we praise God, we get our minds off our situations. When we praise, we focus on him instead of our our negative circumstances or pressures of life, our minds become stayed and fixed on him. And if I ask you, man, praise God. You've been so good. Let's look at this. Look at how many of you made it through the end of the day. So many people didn't. Praise God. We thank you. We just praise your name. Woo. We thank you. I'll never forget. <laughs> See, when my, say, I like talking about my grandfather. So, Yo, you, you might get used to it, but my parents used to, um, you know, in the summertime, we had to go down and stay in the country, down with Papa and, and my grandmother. And there was one room and all, all of us slept in this room. And that was the room my grandfather would come in to pray before he go at night and start his day. I think he was planting seeds, but I'll never forget when he used to pray at night, he just praised God and give thanks. Just thank him and praise him of everything that God did. And sometimes he had, he had tough days. You understand? Tough days. But he just prays and give thanks. I'm talking to you about making some changes in your life. 
You need to develop a life of gratitude and thanksgiving. A gratitude. You may say, well, I am grateful. I am grateful, Pastor. Well, then act like you're grateful. Just be thankful. Glory be. When you look at your kids, you should be thankful. They're still here. They're alive. If they're alive, that means there's plenty of time for my prayer to get them. Because when I pray, God answers my prayer. Oh, I just thank you, Lord, that my child will live and not die. When you hear a bad report, you're giving thanks for what God has promised. See, he doesn't cause us to worry. We cast our cares on him. So you got to develop praise and thanksgiving and renew your mind to the things of God. You got to give God his rightful place in your life. And you're not giving him rightful place unless you're giving thanksgiving and praise to him. He's looking for a grateful heart. What does the Bible say? In, it says that he's a jealous God. Man, he, he get jealous of any. He's supposed to have the first attention. And when you do praise, all oh, heaven come to attention. Boy, you praise God, the angels all come to attention. Heaven comes to attention. What do they say? You know how important praise is? It says in, in Psalms that when a believer comes to a Lord, that they praise and have almost like a party for each one that comes to him. That's how important praise is. Boy, y'all going to, hey, heaven's not quiet. Some of you going to be surprised. Glory be to God. See, you, you got to check yourself by asking, what is it that I'm putting first place in my life? If I'm putting God first, if I am, I'm going to be grateful to him, thanking him. He's your source. Don't let the cares of the world choke out God's word from your thoughts. You got to give thanks to God that you're redeemed from this curse. Even though it looks like the curse is surrounding you, I'm redeemed from this. I thank you, Lord. Jesus, you did not die in vain. Woo, you're just so you're just so awesome for me. Glory be to God. This is what we got to develop a life of Thanksgiving and be grateful at all time. You understand? The Bible says, I think uh, in Romans 1 21, and I'm off my notes a moment. It says that people who do not acknowledge or think about God, they have hearts that are darkened. We should always be thanking him and praising him. Now, you, I'm not talking about you developing your own praise team. I'm talking about you giving praise to God, giving thanksgiving to him. Those words should be coming. What, what do we say Ephesians 4, 29 says? It says what? He says, don't let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may be minister grace upon the hearers. God wants to use your voice to bless somebody else. He wants to use you to comfort somebody. He wants to use you that when somebody does you wrong or says things wrong, that you that you have words that will edify them. Words that will help them become stronger. That you won't even think of saying harmful things, not even saying what you feel. See, I can't deny feelings, but I cannot I could deny those feelings from coming out my mouth. I can't deny my emotions, but I could deny it from coming out of my mouth. I can't deny fear trying to get a grip on me, but I can deny it from coming out of my mouth. You understand? <laughs> Why? Because the closer I get with God, woo, he's going to work with my words. Glory be to God. I think it's, a, if you have Psalm 107 in your Bible, Psalm 107, I hope you're getting something out of this because I'm slap happy. Glory be to God. Come on, why don't you repeat this with me? Every word that comes out of my mouth. Come on, say it with me. Every word that comes out of my mouth. It will, will, will sound as if God has spoken it himself. I understand that God desires me to be more cheerful, to have a, to give words of thanksgiving and songs of praise in my life, in Jesus' name. You understand, we have to get to the point. If we look at Psalms 107, I think it's 107, verse one. Woo! 
Ooh, thank you, Lord. You know, and this day and time, oh, the words that you speak will, will, will you understand? When, when we go through things, that God has people that watches us, so does the enemy. And how we respond is so important. How we respond. Our first response has an impact. When somebody treats you wrong and next thing you know, yeah, they ain't no good. I told you they were never going to be no good. Well, pastor, that's, that's a fact, but it may not be the truth. Because you may not know what's behind that person doing what they're doing. And God's like, I'm not asking you to figure out why they're doing. I just need your words to edify. And there's so many children that are dysfunctional, not because their parents were abusive, because of what their parents said. You ain't never going to be nothing. You're just like your daddy. Just like your mama. You ain't no good. Never go, you're dummy. We speak, we speak facts instead of speaking truth. Remember, facts can't change the truth. The truth changed the facts. And we have to speak. If you believe your child, you believe your child is better than what their behavior, then you're going to speak what's better. But pastor, they, they were wrong. Then, you know, the Bible says you could correct the wrong. You know, my grandmother used to, when she get, said, go get that switch. And when she put that switch on, she, was, she never really tagged us for what we did. She just tagged us on, on that this was not the proper behavior for a person like you. You're not like this. You're better than this. And God expects better from you. I expect better from you because this is not you. You're a blessing. I remember those words coming back. I, I started remembering those words, even though she, she, you know, that was totally different than how other people would correct people. You understand? Your words are so powerful. That's why we're talking about. And in tough times and under pressure, your words are, are the first words you say. Like some of you need to get up. Holy Spirit, if I say the wrong words the first time, my response is wrong. I need you to show me and so I can make that correction. Because first John 1 9 says that we confess, 1 7 says we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The worst thing can be is you are ignorant of the fact that your tongue is so, so off the off the I mean, just just terrible, and you don't even recognize it. But then you're wondering why people avoid you or want to be around you, or you're drawing the wrong people around you. You speak negativity, you'll hang with people who are negative. Because you'll be, when you start speaking the right words, you'll be a light in a dark place. And people may not like you because of it, but it's better. Hey, let me tell you, I'd rather, be, I'd rather follow God than follow whether people like me or not. Because I want to say what God says. Look at Psalms 107. And let's look at verse one and two. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Oh man, that just didn't get me excited. You understand? That just get me excited. Let's, let's read that again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Say what? <laughs> that his mercy endure forever, that the Lord is good to me. Look at verse eight and nine. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Oh, that's powerful. I read that again, verse eight. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hmm. For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He so, you know, there ain't nobody, every good thing that has ever happened in your life came from God. He couldn't do anything. Anybody that believes that God would use the devil to do anything, you don't know God. He never uses the devil. He's too good. He's so good. He said in Matthew 7 11, I know you're 7 11 people. He says, he says, my, he said, he says, I'm, God is so good. Even on a parent, he said, your best day of your parent don't even, as a parent, 
as a father or mother, don't even compare to how good I am. He doesn't know anything but goodness. And some of the good things that happened to you to today was his goodness. His angels going forth and protecting you. He's so good. Woo! And his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. See, we need to praise him sometime. I mean, you know, sometimes you when you, you know, we go to bed and sleep, just give thanksgiving and praise him. Just rejoice that you're alive and you're gonna wake up tomorrow morning. Oh, come on, Pastor. We don't, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning willing to do the work of the Lord. See, you're the redeemed. And you have the opportunity to prove his goodness through praise and thanksgiving. Because you're redeemed from the curse of the law. I mean, the curse could have been get involved with your family, you know, but the curse ain't with you. You're redeemed. Thank you, Lord. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed from the curse. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Now I'm sharing this with you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You understand? And because once you start practicing gratitude and joyfulness. It's going to have a lot to do. You got to spend time in his word and learn some things. I want to speak the way God wants me to speak. Because I believe half of our situations come from the words we've spoken. Sometimes we think the devil is putting us down, but it's our words that's putting us down. And those words keep us in a, a constant circle. That all the devil has to do is push this button and you start saying things and you start walking into what you're saying. And so we need to work on it. As you grow with God, your tongue is going to be a ready rider. It's going to make some changes. I wanted to talk about this today because it's, it's something that we, we, we say we know, but it's not what we do. Stop saying you know this and do it. And if you're doing it, you're going to rejoice when you hear about it. The greatest thing for me is to rejoice when I hear somebody preaching what I'm doing. You understand? Hot man, just rejoice. I don't have a know-it-all. And that's what we all have to be teachable. teachable. I had it one time. I don't know a lot of things, but grant I'm open to the Lord teach me and to use whoever he is to help me get understanding. Glory be to God. I pray you got something out of this message. I wanted to, this was part two of what we, what we, what we, what we learned here today. You know, what we were learning on, on speaking words, godly words in tough times. You understand? We, we have to, we have to just, I'm talking here, you have to make a choice. You could call this a good Bible study or a bad Bible study, but you got to make a choice whether you're going to follow God. You understand? He said in Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah 61, three. I know I'm trying, I'm, I didn't say I was closing, but uh, Isaiah 61, three. And since it's Bible study, we can go as many scriptures as we want to. Praise God. Tell us what he says in verse three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This is a prophecy about us. This is a prophetic word that the prophet Isaiah was saying about our time. He's saying in our time, when the church, you understand, when we go through some tough times and we're mourning and we're grievous, our heart is broken. He's going to give unto us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness. You understand, we are the trees of righteousness. We're right standing because of God, because of what Jesus did at the cross. You understand, he gives you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We're not supposed to let our feelings overtake us. I have to say what God says. I have to praise him. I have to give thanks because it doesn't matter what I'm going through. I know he's here. And as I get praise, I'll hear what I need to go and what I need to do. You understand? That's how you stop the enemy's voice. That's how some of you need, you can get out of depression. You understand? You can get out of depression a lot if you start praising him and giving thanks to him. Or just thank him for the things he's done and open up your mouth and just rejoice in it. You understand? What do you mean rejoice? Just say it loud. Just say it loud. I am extremely blessed. Woo. I thank you, Lord. I have more than enough money for gas. I remember one time, and we're, we're closing in here. We were going to do, we we're going to a, a meeting. It was a Benny Hinn meeting in um, uh, Philadelphia. And um, 
the bus we had wasn't operating. So my wife and I had to go pick, we had, we had, had a list saying, if you're gonna go to this event, you're gonna have to, uh, you call us and we'll pick you up. But we had some people that were out in whew, Greenville, Delaware and others, we were in Wilmington. So we decided we were, we were going to pick three or four up. And while we're driving, I noticed that the yellow light was on in the car. And when the yellow light was on this way, you see in my, the car I was driving, it was, I mean, it became yellow, yellow, and it was, and it would push, push, saying, when you, you, you don't have but about 15 miles. So I pointed to my wife, and there was no gas station in sight and we re, and at all, and we needed to get where we were. So we just started praising God, giving thanks. We picked up the first person, giving thanks, picked up the second person. I remember somebody in the back said, is your light on? What light? We just praised him. We got all the way. It's so awesome. We're able to get all the way back, all the way into town, right to a gas station and was able to put gas in. I mean, we went over with the three places, probably went over 40, 40 miles in a total around circle. And we only had gas for 10 and praise just, whoo, it just, it was like an earthquake. It just moved. And we laughed about it. <laughs> we laughed. Nobody understood it because where we had in that area, we couldn't find a gas station. It was, and we would have had to get off the track to look at it because where the people were living at. I'm just telling you, there's something about, instead of, we could have said, oh, we ain't got no gas, yellow light on. We need to go find it. You know, with that, da, 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 with it. But we, we were on a mission. And God, and we just thank God that the car would not break down, would not slow down, that it would do that. Now, some of you, some of you may think that's, man, Pastor, that's, that's how, but see, how we weren't gonna let nothing separate us from, we were on a mission from the love of God. Those people needed to be there. We had made that commitment and we had God with us. And I believe that praise as we got to that car and we fill up and I, it looks like, you know, it was just a blessing to see how, what God did during that time. Our focus was on him, not on the, listen, we took our eyes off the yellow light and put our focus on him. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Well, I hope you got something out of this. Glory be to God. It, 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 this, is, this is something you need to practice with small things. You got to understand how to speak godly words in tough times. You got to learn how to speak godly words in times of pressure. You're going to have to learn how to not to speak your feelings anymore. And that you, it's a choice to speak your feelings. It's a choice. And you got to make a decision, just like you made a choice for salvation, you make a choice that your feelings will not control your tongue. You know, you're going to stop allowing, at allowing a, a frustration and disappointment to what? To get me off track to say the wrong things. That's how you get off track, by saying the wrong thing. Glory be to God. So let's make this confession. Say, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that my tongue is a ready writer. When pressure comes, I'm gonna speak what God wants. Praise and thanksgiving comes out my mouth. Not my feelings, not my emotions. I will not allow these emotions to rule my tongue and rule my life. I am the head and not the tail. I'm the top only and I'm never beneath. I am anointed and appointed. I have God inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit working in me. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. And I'm gonna lean from the inside not the outside. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's get praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We made it to the evening. Thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing our children. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us. Glory be to God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Praise you, Father. Praise you. Glory. It takes faith to say praise in the middle, in the midst of a storm. Praise you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Glory be to God. Glory. If you, if, and let me tell you, we enjoy you so much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you have any questions, you should type them in. We will answer those questions during this time. But let's receive our offering. If you got some questions you'd like to ask, I didn't ask for a testimony, just questions. You just send, send, them, send us a note, send me a note right now. 
And let's see if we can answer that. But we, it's offering time. Glory be to God. And um, this is an opportunity for you to give cheerfully. Just ask, you know, listen to me carefully. Always ask the Holy Spirit what you should give because he knows what's best for you. And this is a time for you to sow a seed. If the, you understand, if what's coming across your screen, it'll tell you if you go to our webpage at wccw.org and hit donate, you can, you can sow with PayPal, credit cards, debit cards, or you can write us and, and, and send your offering in the mail. But we're, you understand? At P.O. Box 2587, Wilmington, Delaware, 19805. You understand? And this is opportunity for you to show. But remember, I need to be cheerful. It takes faith to be cheerful in the midst of a need. Glory be to God. And hear what God is, has for you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, so good. So good. So if you, did, if you didn't have any questions, I tell you, you understand? <laughs> it's, as you give today, don't give grudgingly. Don't give of necessity. God love a cheerful day, giver. And let me pray for you right now. Father, I just thank you just for the opportunity to sow in the kingdom of God. We're honored to be able to sow. We're so happy after all what we're giving don't even compare to what you've done for us. It doesn't even come close to what you've done for us. So Father, we give this freely to you. We give it joyfully to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. If there's no questions, I'm telling you, yeah, you know, if it's no question, I want you to I want you to get home starting today and practice the presence of God. When difficulty things and, and things come up, you understand that aren't right and things are challenging and they're frustrating. I want you to practice that presence. Glory be to God. I want you to practice Thanksgiving. I want you to practice what comes out your mouth. Be observant to what comes out your mouth. Glory be to God. If you ask the Holy Spirit, He will He will show you what's coming out your mouth. I had to learn the hard way. I kept asking him almost what the point I said. I'm, I'm, one time I said, I'm sorry I asked you because it seems like everything coming out of my mouth is not right. But, it, but he, it allowed me not to repent of what I've said and to grow with him. Glory be to God. And that's what we need. Your words are so powerful. Do not take them lightly. Even watch the jokes you say. If it puts people down and set things up, just watch what you say. The Holy Ghost will direct you in the name of Jesus. We love you. We thank God for you. I hope you were blessed today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're, hey, we'll be on next Thursday. Glory be to God. And we're on Sunday. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 10 a.m. sharp. Praise and worship. Ready to give this word out. Glory be to God. And also, if you are a man, Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning, we have men's prayer. If you look on our website, you should be able to pick that up immediately. Hey, men, young men, glory. You'll be blessed. I'm telling them, hey, it's anointed. It comes on air from 9 to 9 15. It's truly anointed. Glory be to God. We love you. We thank God for you. So let's close out together. Why don't you uh, say this? Say this with me. Glory be to God. I am blessed and highly favored. I am righteous, never forsaken. My seed will never beg bread. That's why I can boldly say, Satan is defeated. Darkness is dispelled totally from my life because Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. We thank you. We love you. You have an awesome day. Hey, watch those words. All right. We love you. God bless you. Enjoy your, enjoy your, enjoy your Thursday. Glory be God. Enjoy your Friday. We love you. God bless.